Hi friends, welcome back to All On Law. This is a quick OBGYN. And today I'm going to talk about acute salpingeal oophoritis. Acute is acute, salpingeal is nothing but a fallopian tube. Oophoritis is nothing but ovary, right? So acute infection of this fallopian tube and the ovary, acute salpingeal oophoritis. Remember the cervicitis, typically, if it's not treated, it can lead to acute salpingeal oophoritis. If not treated, it can lead to tubule or an abscess later in the life. So very important thing, okay? So you know very well. If this is a uterus, okay, this is a uterus, this is a fallopian tube, and there goes ovary, 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 so infection of this and the this, okay, right, excellent guys. So now what are the symptoms the patient will have, so remember the important uh, symptom in these patients will be bilateral lower abdominal pelvic pain. Okay, so it can be very severe. Remember, is abdominal pain. It's a bilateral. Remember, it's not a unilateral. It's a bilateral. Okay, it can be from gradual to sudden. Okay, uh, often after menses. Remember, after menses. Right. And as you know, there is abdominal pain. The patient might complain of nausea and vomiting. Okay, nausea and vomiting are really very important thing you should ask in the patient. Okay. So what's on examination? What you see is what you call a mucoprolonged cervical discharge. On examination, you see mucoprolonged cervical discharge. Cervical discharge and the and on examination you will have cervical motion tenderness okay and a bilateral adnexal tenderness are present Okay, since this is an infection, the patient will have what you call, <coughs> sorry for that, uh, patient will have fever, tachycardia, abdominal tenderness, okay, peritoneal size, guarding may be there, okay, depending on the, what you call, extent of the infection, okay. So, what are the investigations you want to do? What are the investigations you want to do? So, remember, these are the important thing that can be asked in USMLE, mucopril and cervical discharge, cervical motion tenderness is really, really very important point that will help you to diagnose this acute self injury ophoritis. Okay, that's a really very important point. Mucopril and cervical discharge and cervical motion tenderness. Right? Okay. So investigation WBC and e ESR will be what will be the WBC and ESR will be elevated. Okay. And the laparoscopy, when you do laparoscopy, it shows edematous, edematous, prurulent ovary ducts, okay? Edematous, edematous, prurulent ovary ducts. On laparoscopy, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cervical cultures will come positive for a chlamydia and what you call uh, uh, gonorrhea. So they might have this infection and that might be the cause for that uh, uh, acute salpingeophoritis. Okay. Right. So what is the differential diagnosis? Very important over here is ectopic pregnancy. You have to rule the ectopic pregnancy. That's why I do the sonogram. Okay. Yeah. Now diagnosis is... This is a clinical based diagnosis, remember. So you have to diagnose this disease clinically. So that's why very important for USMLE step to CK. 
okay the bilateral lower abdominal pain mucopurulent cervical discharge cervical motion tenderness that's it these are the points that catching points the catchy okay mm -hmm. so let's move on to the management how do you manage now we have the outpatient outpatient treatment okay outpatient treatment and the inpatient treatment the outpatient treatment the criteria include a certain diagnosis and no evidence of systemic infection or a pelvic abscess if the systemic infection is not involved no pelvic abscess is seen so what you give you give ofloxacin ofloxacin bid there's a twice a day with metronidazole twice a day and metronidazole twice a day okay this continued for 14 days well it depends on the extent of the infection okay it can be continued more our inpatient treatment criteria is uncertain like for inpatient for this uh, self injury arthritis if the diagnosis is uncertain uncertain you don't know it's better to get what you call hospitalize the patient uncertain okay and then we have what is called the nelly gravida nelly gravida so she has never been a pregnant adolescent adolescent and then if outpatient treatment is failure 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 okay and if the patient has intrauterine device placed okay um, then the, if the patient has a pelvic abscess pelvic abscess or a temperature body temperature is more than 39 more than 39 degrees centigrade or uh, if you convert it to what you call um, Fahrenheit is going to be 102.2 102.2 Fahrenheit okay how do you treat this in patient is IV cefoxidine or cefotidone plus IV what you call uh, doxycycline right or clindamycin plus gentamicin can also be given so just for USMLE, no need to remember the doses. Doses are not really very important for USMLE examination for any step. Just remember the drug that you want to give is cefoxetine and or cefotetan plus uh, doxycycline IV. Okay. And a clindamycin or gentamicin can also be given. Okay, guys. So this is brief discussion about acute self injury arthritis for USMLE step to CK. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.